Good morning, Hub City. Uh, we're glad you guys are here this morning. If you want to stand and join us in some worship, we would love that.
Father, as that song says, it's this calling, that this desire that uh, you be our vision, that you be what we see, that, that you be what we're seeking after and running after, that uh, as, as your son said, that seek first the kingdom of God, then all the other things are going to fall into place. But yet, even if that's our desire, just in the daily grind, it's so easy for to start heeding the riches, to start heeding the empty praise. And so, Father, I pray that in this, this time that we have here together, that you allow us to refocus on you, that we put Christ back in the center of our vision, of our purpose, of our heart, of our desire, of our direction. And that that not just be something that happens for a couple hours or even for the day, but through the week it carry us through, that we can be a people on purpose, a people seeking after your kingdom with, with Christ at the center. And Father, also, as we are now um, not celebrating, but honoring, commemorating Memorial Day, remembering those who have lost their lives, those who have given sacrificially for the sake of defending our country in the armed services and throughout the, the other uh, first responders, Father. I just pray uh, a blessing on those families, Father, that have lost. I pray that you be their peace, be their comfort, and that we as a nation be grateful for and that we honor the courage and the sacrifice and then take from that the example to show courage and to be sacrificial, Father. And we thank you again for their service. In your name, amen. Well, good morning, Hub City. It's so good to be here with all of you this Memorial Day weekend. In just a second, I'm going to have you uh, sit down. But first, all of the next gen, which is fifth through eighth, fifth through eighth, can head on next door. Someone will be waiting for you to walk you over there. And so before you sit down, just say hi to someone, especially hopefully someone you haven't said hi to before. And then we'll have an announcement video in just a couple moments here. Welcome to Hub City Church, where ordinary people following an extraordinary God together. As we continue our push for volunteers at the Berry Dairy Days Festival, Janet Houtsma wanted to share her thoughts on why she loves this event so much. I love a lot of things about Berry Dairy Days. Um, there are so many things to love about Dairy Dairy, Berry Dairy Days, <laughs> <laughs> if I can say it. Um, I have been able to be a part of it since our church started Berry Dairy Days. So a big thing is just to be involved in something that our city is involved in. I love that we are a part of it as a church. I love that we can interact with the people of Skagit County, of Burlington, of, of the surrounding areas. I love to see the smiles on people's face both kids and adults as we give them these wonderful activities that they can do and just seeing our people of the church have fun with the people of the community i just love all of it i really believe that for our church to get out of outside of our walls is wonderful because we are part of the community um, as I said before, we get to be right next to the people that live in, in the community. We sometimes are sitting in our sanctuary, which is wonderful, but to be God's hands, God's face, God's smile, I think especially is so important. People will see us through our actions, our love to them, just our enjoyment of being with them. If any of you are on the fence about whether you want to do this or not, I would truly encourage you to be a part of this. Sometimes it's scary to be outside of our walls, to do something you've never done before. But this is such a wonderfully easy thing to do. Just put on a smile and follow the instructions of the game or whatever you're helping with. It's really just an, a super enjoyable time. I think 
everybody feels super energetic and happy after they do this. And I would just encourage you to just take that plunge and, and try it. I know you'll enjoy it. <laughs> like Janet said, take the plunge and try it. We agree with her. We know you'll love it. You can sign up at the next step wall or grab a volunteer card with the QR code. Consider helping for multiple times over the few days. Sign up for two or more shifts and you get a free Hub City hat or t-shirt. I like the sound of that. It's just a few more weeks away until we get the party started with our city. Make plans to join your church and community for this fun weekend. Next weekend is the deadline to show your interest in the fall missions trip to Germany and Spain. This fun-filled 10 days of building relationships and caring for missionaries and their children will be an awesome time. There is something life-changing about missions trips. It's like a whole year's worth of growth and becoming more like Jesus in 10 days. There's something about mission trips that reshape our thinking, help us see Jesus in new ways, and grow to be more like him. Sign up at the next steps wall by scanning the QR code or email Pastor Sean with your questions. We're continually amazed at God's provision, which is through you, the church, supporting financially the mission of Hub City Church. If you would like to partner financially with us, we have a few easy ways to give. After this video, we'll pass the baskets, drop in your cash or check. You can scan the Give QR code located on the CFAX with your mobile device. You can drop it in a Dropbox located on the back wall of the sanctuary. Visit us online anytime at thehubcitychurch.com slash give or snail mail us to our mailing address. Again, thanks for trusting Hub City Church and partnering with us as we make disciples of Jesus. So just to, uh, we're going to take offering adjustment here, but just quickly to kind of piggyback on what Janet said, you know, it, it is, to go and do that can be a real act of courage, you know, you're praying and thanking God for the courage that, that, that veterans have shown. And I don't want to say like, well, if people can go give their lives, you can go out there and do dairy, dairy days. I'm not going that direction because I, I know there's plenty of vets who face moral danger, but are still going to be afraid to go serve kids that way because it's scary, you know, to, to step out of your comfort zone. So this is just my encouragement to you is just, to, if you're thinking about, if you're kind of on that fence like that, well, my family, when we drive to church, we always pray on the way, and kind of part of the prayer is, you know, Jesus, give us a open and generous hearts here at church. And I just want to encourage that same thought. I know that, again, if you're thinking, I just couldn't do that, I'm too new here, or I just don't do kids, or I don't do people, it is a sacrifice. It's an act of courage. It's an act of generosity, but that's who God is to us, and the blessings we, we receive in return are huge. So, Again, this is a huge thing the church does. It's amazing. I just wanted to kind of put that out there. Uh, so, ushers, you can go and come on forward with the offering baskets. We're going to pray over the offering and uh, then continue on. Father, again, thank you for your generosity to us, the way you've poured yourself out to us and you provide for us so richly. And I pray, Father, now that uh, as we respond in kind, respond with, with giving a portion back of what you've given us, that, uh, that you take it and use it in great ways, and to thinking especially the Berry Dairy Days, that just you multiply the effects of the dollars that we give to do great work here in this church, in this valley, and around the world. We love you, Father. Thank you for your goodness to us. In your name, amen. Amen. All right, well, uh, every month we take a, a week to highlight missions, and it's called our Mission Moment. Um, and this month, we want to highlight summer camps. I get to be the youth pastor here, so I get to be all things summer camp, and I am so excited. It's been a couple years since we've been able to go to Medical Lake and do summer camp, and it's back. I'm so excited, and yeah, come on. Let's get excited. Um, summer camp is amazing, right? First, I, my favorite thing about summer camp is that there are no phones, right? Like, we get a whole week of undistracted, no social media, no phone games. We get to just hang out with each other, and we get to hang out with God, and it's this this momentous moment that we get to just be with our students and they get to encounter Jesus undistracted 24-7 for a whole week. Like how cool is that? We get to be away from mom and dad for a little bit, which is sometimes for me when I was younger, that was really hard. I cried a lot when I was away from home, but some of us are really excited about being away from home and it's just a really awesome opportunity and man, this year is going to be awesome. We have between the two camps close to um, or over 30 students going. Like, come on. Like, that is amazing. Like, what? I am so 
so hyped for it. So um, here's where you get a step in. First way that you can support us is please pray. Please start praying right now. Um, it's scary for me to drive for six hours with all of all these students in there so that we get to camp safely, um, that nobody gets hurt um, at camp. You be, can be praying that kids give their life to Jesus, that, that they, they say, Jesus, I want to serve you with everything that I am, um, that we can have fun. And, and camp is also great for us to connect and, and just um, tighten our community here at Zion Youth and at, as our kids' ministry, that we just get to uh, develop a community that we follow Jesus together. Because we need other people to follow Jesus with, right? We can't do it alone, right? So that's, that's some ways that you can um, support summer camps. And also financially, um, you'll probably see here that these kids are walking around with a ticket packet. Um, and they're going to be selling tickets to get their way to summer camp. So buy some tickets if you want to. And you don't even have to buy some tickets if you don't want to. You can just give to them. Um, and, and maybe that is the catalyst moment of their journey with Jesus. Um, so um, those are the two ways that I'd love for you to participate with us as we go to camp. Um, and I'm just, I'm expecting uh, awesome things. And I, I'm just, you can probably see it in my face. I'm, I'm really giddy about about this. I think it's going to be really fun. So um, I would love to just say a prayer over summer camps uh, this year. God, we love you so much, and, and we are grateful that um, we are um, just a, a young community that, that is just serving you, God, that is um, chasing after you, God, and we're, we're grateful that all the students in this church are not the future of the church, but they are the church. God, and we are just asking that um, as we go to summer camp that we will be um, just filled with the Holy Spirit, that we will be equipped, that we will be challenged and encouraged as we go there, God. So we just ask that you're with us as we travel um, in August, and uh, God, we just hope for an awesome time. God, we love you and we trust you. In your name we pray, amen. So we are continuing our series through First and Second Corinthians called It is Complicated because there's a lot of things in our faith that's complicated and the books of First and Second Corinthians covers a bunch of them. So just a couple resources for you. Uh, this card that's on your seat has some great uh, questions, discussion questions for your family, for your home group, some reading plans, just encourage you to use this. And then also on the backside, handy dandy little calendar to put up on your uh, fridge to know all the stuff we got going on. So let's uh, pray and, and get into the word. This is from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, starting at verse 14. Therefore, my dear, dear friends, flee from idolatry. I speak to you as sensible people. Judge for yourself what I say. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf, we, who are many, are one body. For we all share in the one loaf. Consider the people of Israel. Do not those who eat the, sacrifice in the, uh, eat the sacrifice participate in the altar? Do I mean then that food sacrificed to an idol is anything or that an idol is anything? No. But the sacrifices of pagans are offered to demons, not to God. And I do not want you to be participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. You cannot have a part in both the Lord's table and the table of demons. Are we trying to rouse the Lord's jealousy? Are we stronger than he? This is the word of the Lord. Good stuff. Well, that is where we are hanging out uh, today. And as Josh was saying, we are um, kind of starting a summer series of a, we call, we're calling it a grab bag where we're, we're looking at all of these con, uh, con, uh, comp, I can't talk, um, complicated issues in First and Second Corinthians. Um, and today I get to talk about this idea of our, our devotion is divided, of our heart is aligned and, and loyal to two different things, to God and something else. Um, but before I get into it, I would just love to say a word of prayer. So will you pray with me? 
God, we, we're grateful that we get to be here together as, uh, as a family, and we are here for you. So this morning, can, can you be the focus? Can you be the thing that is uh, driving this conversation? Can you challenge us? Can you equip us? Can you encourage us this morning? God, we, we pray that we will hold on to these words, that it won't just go in one ear and out the other, but that we will hold on to your truths and that we will trust you with everything that you're speaking to us. In your name we pray, amen. All right, well, if you have been um, in proximity with me in the past three, four months, you have probably heard me gabbing about houses because Cameron and I are looking to buy a house. Yes, that is terrifying. This market is crazy, right? Like people are paying way over straight cash, closing two weeks, right? It's insane. I just, I love this too. Like I will sit on Redfin for like two hours every night and I'll look at million dollar mansions and it's super, I can't afford that um, if, if you didn't know that. Um, but I just, I love it, right? Like it's so much fun and seeing all the possibilities of, of what could be, but it's also a little nerve wracking, right? Of giving all of your money away, right? Like that's scary. The down payment is like a little terrifying to me. Um, but it is, it's really fun, and it's an exciting season of our lives, and there has been some development. Cameron and I have an offer accepted on a house. Like, come on, let's go. Woo! Yeah, praise the Lord for that one. Um, so that happened a, a couple Wednesdays ago. We got it under asking price, which is insane. So, like, man, God is orchestrating something really good. Um, but that Wednesday when we figured out that we got the house was like, it was a lot, right? Because we're really excited. We're jumping up and down like, oh my gosh, we got a house. And then we're like, we got a house. I have to pay for all of this. And that's scary and all the improvements, right? And I don't know how to do all that stuff. So there's a lot of things that have to happen. And then that Wednesday gets a little more crazy. I have to take Cameron to the ER, Right, there's a lot happening, right? She's not feeling good, um, so I take her to the ER, and we get there late at night. She's fine now, just so you know. She's all good. I know you're all looking at me like, is she okay? Right, but we, I, I'm sitting in the ER with my wife, and I'm, I'm kind of freaking out, right? I'm, I'm all anxious, and you know, she, she's doing better. She got some medicine in her, and I'm just sitting, looking at Redfin again, um, would you believe it or not, and I'm looking at the house that we got an offer accepted on. And I'm looking through, and I'm like, man, this is gorgeous. We can do this with this. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, wait, Cameron, there's not a dishwasher. They said there was a dishwasher here. There is no dishwasher. And I start to freak out, right? There was, when we, when we saw the house, there's this gorgeous fridge, man. It has the fancy, like, water dispenser thing and the ice, and that's what I've been dreaming for my whole life, right? This is what I've been working for is a fancy fridge. So I was so like obsessed with this fridge that I did not see that there was not a dishwasher. So I'm sitting in the ER at like 11.30 at night and I'm like, Cameron, we can't buy this home. There's not a dishwasher. I'm like freaking out over a dishwasher, right? You know, that, it's just, I'm so anxious, I'm overwhelmed, right? We get home about 1 a.m., right? We, we get home, we sleep. And the next day, I go on Redfin again, which I would not advise after you buy a home, and I see that there's another home on the market in our price range. That's gorgeous. I'm like, I really want that house, right? So I have an offer accepted on this house. They've said yes to that, and, and we, we're in on this one, and all of a sudden, it's cheaper, and it's nicer, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have this house, but I want this house, right? And my heart was just torn in two. It was divided. And my allegiance was to multiple homes. I wanted this home uh, that we already have, but I also wanted this home. And I don't know if you know this, but I don't have the capacity or the funds to buy both of them. I can't do that. Um, that's not um, part of the equation, right? But it reminds me, uh, Paul in verse 20, 21 reminds us that we don't have the capacity to have um, multiple spiritual homes. We don't have the capacity to spiritually be divided. He says this, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of the demons too. You cannot have a part in both the Lord's table and the table of the demons. When we are taking up multiple spiritual homes or when our devotion is divided, our allegiance to God is not 100%. Really what we are saying, God, 
I'm all in on you, God. I love you. I'm here for you, but only halfway. I'm all in, but halfway, right? That doesn't really make sense. That's not how math works, right? You serve, right? We, we, we serve, playing the worship team, maybe help with the kids. You're in the tech booth, right? You, you go to church every Sunday. You read your chapter of your Bible every day. You go on, hopefully, the mission trip in Germany with me. We give, but there are other things in our life that have our attention. Jesus doesn't have 100% of our attention or our, loyal, our loyalty. And what I want to communicate to you today is that there are very real, very attractive things that are competing for your loyalty. They're taking your eyes off of God, and, and, and we see in the scripture that that's not really going to compute with God. He says, you cannot have both uh, you cannot have a part in both the Lord's table and the table of the demons. That's not how it works. So as we, we discover what God is speaking to us today, I want you to contemplate this question. What is competing against God for your loyalty? In your life right now, what is the thing that is taking your eyes off of Jesus? What is that thing that is tugging you in the opposite direction of where God wants you to go? Maybe it's work. Maybe you are so driven with your work that you are not gonna include God in that area of your life. You are so, uh, so wanting to get to that CEO position or whatever, right? And you want to work up the ladder and you, your attention is all in that and God doesn't have enough time because of my work. Or maybe there's a relationship. Maybe um, there's a really cute person in your life that you love a lot, right? And you put all of your focus on them instead of your relationship with God. Maybe it's entertainment, the movies we watch or, or the sports teams that we watch. I watch the Mariners way too much and I'm, I live and die with the Mariners and that's a dangerous thing, right? Whew. Right, our, our entertainment can cause us to shift our focus from God, our loyalty to God, and onto that entertainment. And here's the thing, the, the, these parts of our lives are not necessarily a bad thing, right? This work is great, we have to work. Relationships are great. I love my wife. Entertainment, I love the Mariners, right? They're not bad, but it turns into a problem when, we start to, when, when those things start to steal the spotlight. And we are hyper-focused on those areas of our lives. Now our loyalty switches from God alone. God, I love you. I'm here for you. You got my whole time. My schedule is yours. My finances are yours. And now it switches to God plus blank. It's God and something. It's not just God. And now we have stock in multiple hopes, in multiple homes, and what can happen if we're not careful is we can compartmentalize our faith, is that I am a God-fearing person in this area of my life, but when I go to work, I don't even mention God. That's not a part of my life. When I watch entertainment, I hope that God is not watching me when, when I'm watching something, right? Right? We compartmentalize our faith. We honor God, we serve him, and we follow his ways in certain areas of our lives. God, you can have this part of my life and I'm gonna follow you here, but when it comes to this thing, that thing has my loyalty. I'm gonna follow their ways and their beliefs. And it reminds me of, there's this, um, this concept called spreading bets. And it's this concept of playing um, both or multiple outcomes in hopes or even guarantee, guaranteeing that at least one side will win, right? And when I spread my bets between um, two different outcomes, there is a more likely chance that I'm not going to lose my money. It's less risky um, and, and um, at least one side will win, right? And the people of Corinth were doing this, right, with, with eating both at the Lord's table. I'm saying, I'm, I'm in on the Lord's table. I'm going to put some money in on that, right, because that's a good investment, right? But you know what? I'm also going to put some resource. I'm going to put some investment in at the demon's table, too, because um, I'm going to spread my bets, right? Uh, hopefully, it's going to work. One of those tables is going to work out. And they must have thought, at least I'm participating in God's table. Look, God, look, I, I have my attendance, right? I've showed up to the Lord's table. At least I have participated. I've bought in. Look, God, I have some buy-in. That should be good enough. 
right? And sometimes I think we do that too, is because I go to church, because I have read my Bible today, because I have participated, because I have invested in God, I can also participate in something that is not of God. I have checked off the God box, so now I can do whatever I want over here. We kind of have this idea of, man, my conscience is clear for the week. I went to church, and I've invested in some God time. We are spreading our allegiance thin, so at least we come away with some winnings. And when we live a life uh, that our devotion to God, when our loyalty to God is divided, when it's in multiple areas, we won't go all in on God, right? It's a scary thing if you're playing poker and you're like, I'm all in, right? Like, it's pretty cool, like, right? But, like, it's, that's scary. That's a lot of resources that you are investing into one specific outcome. And what we're doing, we're playing it safe. When we are dividing our devotion, we are saying, I am not willing to go all in on you, God. Instead, we check off the God box so we are safe. It's almost like hazard insurance. We are participating in God's kingdom in his ways, not because we are devoted. And I think what, what I see as, as I'm, I'm processing this for myself, that man, the world really is competing for my loyalty. Like there is a real gravitational pull on my heart. Right? I want to serve God and I love God, but I also love this too. And I think the competition for our hearts, for our dev- devotion, for our participation is not necessarily fueled in the black and white issues in our world but really in the gray areas, right? Not the Ten Commandments, not the very clear things that Jesus says, don't do this, do this. But I think where our hearts start to to go and tug and kind of play this tug of war is in the gray areas. What are gray areas? They're biblically ambiguous, right? They're, They're morally neutral. They're culturally controversial, and the Corinthians were dealing with one of these gray areas. They were like, Paul, can, can I eat this meat that was supposed to be a sacrifice for, for the demons, for the idols? Is this okay? Is this an idol? Should I do this? Should I not? It's not black and white. It's, I don't know, should I be able to do this? And some people are like, dude, go ahead. It's just a hunk of meat. Eat it, right? Like, whatever, right? And then there's also some people that says, man, the intention of that meat was to glorify something other than God. You should not be a part of it. There is a gray area. So what is our gray areas? Right? What is, what is the scripture reference that says um, what movies you should watch and what you shouldn't watch, right? We shouldn't watch Harry Potter, but we can watch Narnia, right? Like there's, there's these areas in our lives that we, we, we see that, that are gray, Right? Should we watch Harry Potter? Should we not? I don't know. Some people say no. Some people say yes. Should we watch rated R movies? What if it says the F word in it? Oh, my goodness. What does the Bible say about rated R movies? What does the Bible say about music? It it says clearly in Scripture to only listen to Praise 106.5, right? Right? It's a gray area. Should you listen to rap music? Should you listen to country music? No, you shouldn't. Um, should, you, um, should you listen to uh, heavy metal, right? What does the Bible say about that? What does the Bible say about clothing? Right? Cameron and I were in Aeropostale a couple months ago, and a mom walked in there and like, why are all the clothes so small? You can see your belly button in all of these clothes. This mom was freaking out, right? What clothes do we wear? Can, can you see our, our belly buttons when we wear clothes? Should we wear ties to church? Do ladies have to wear dresses? What about drinking? No drinking. One drink, two drinks. What about smoking? Cigars, cigarettes, weed. Which one is okay? Which one isn't? Politics. Jesus is a Republican, right? Jesus is a Democrat, right? What does the Bible say about Jesus' political affiliation? Right? And I think you get the point that there is not a black and white answer to these questions. And I think if we aren't careful with gray issues like these, we will begin to pluck verses out of context to support our narrative, our beliefs, and our allegiance. And these, these gray areas can really cause us to have more devotion to these gray areas 
or even just being right about these issues, about these topics, about these conversations, and no longer is God the thing that is our focus, these gray areas are, of figuring out what is right and wrong, and I'm going to die on this hill because I think you shouldn't watch this movie, or I think you should be able to vote this way, don't drink, drink, smoke, don't smoke, smoke, right? The focus is not Jesus anymore. The focus is being right, is being aligned to something that I believe is right. It says in verse 23, I have the right to do nothing, you say. I have the right to do anything, excuse me, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but not everything is constructive. And in my studying of it, I think it's crucial for us to understand that Paul is quoting the Corinthians here, they were saying, I can do anything. And I think uh, we need to make it clear that God is not saying, do whatever you want. You have a free pass, just do whatever you want. Paul reminds us that yes, Christian liberty and the way of life, uh, of freedom is is a real thing, right? It's real that we get to make choices and that we have freedom in Jesus that's important But however, as Paul says, not everything is wise. Not every decision that you make, not every uh, desire that you have is beneficial. It's not constructive. He uses this thing called yes, but logic. Yes, you are free from sin. Jesus' grace is real. That he forgives you, that is real. But you don't get to just like sin like willy-nilly. You don't get to just like sin freely. It's not a free-for-all. And this is where the gray areas in our life become divisive to our devotion to Christ. They are ambiguous. Is this thing really pulling me from God? I can can serve God and still do this thing. The question you are probably asking yourself right now, can I still love this and love God? Where is the line? That's what we want to know. Where is the line and where is the point where I lose my loyalty to Christ? Where is the line? Cameron and I, we've been um, watching Survivor. Any, anybody in, in here watch Survivor? Yeah, it's a couple people. Okay. Um, well, it's a, it's a reality TV show where they are on an island for like 26 days or something and they compete and they vote each other off. Um, and and I, I love it. We just watched the finale on Wednesday. It was crazy. Somebody won a million dollars. It was epic, right? And there's, um, in this game, there's this thing called the, the immunity idol or there's hidden immunity idols. And basically, if you have one of those, you cannot get voted out of the game. You are safe. You are good. It has like real impact. It has real power in the game. But there's also people that are really crafty. And then they make fake immunity idols and they say, here, I'm going to give this to you so you can't get voted out, Right? So there's people who are are sneaky, right? They make these fake idols, and there's also these real idols that have impact in the game. And I think with with these gray areas or with these areas in our life where, where it is causing our loyalty to be questioned, we are trying to determine, is this a fake idol or a real idol? Does it actually have power? Does it is it testing my loyalty or is it fake? Does it, it does it does it not do anything? Is it not affecting my relationship with Jesus? And you may think that your idol or your gray area or this thing that is causing your devotion to be questioned, you might think it's fake and it has no power, right? It's just a movie. It's fine. There's nudity in there. It's fine. It's, there's, there's sex scenes. It's fine that there's, there's cussing and, and, and violence, right? It's just a movie, right? It's just looking at that thing on, on my phone once or, or you know, it's just an anger issue. It's just blank, right? We are trying to justify that our, our, our idols, these gray areas, are harmless, that they're fake. But the reality is that these, these gray areas, these idols, these things that are causing our devotion to be questioned is very, very real. They have real power to test our devotion to Christ. So what do we do when we are faced with one of these areas where, man, I don't know. Right? The, the Corinthians were asking Paul, what do we do with this? Paul gives us an answer in verse 14. It says, therefore, my dear brothers, flee from idolatry. 
My, therefore, my dear brothers, flee from idolatry. We need to learn the habit of fleeing from the areas that, that are causing our loyalty to Christ to be questioned. Run the opposite direction. No longer are we testing. No longer are we saying, ah, what do you think? Is this, is this testing my devotion? No, we're just going to run the opposite direction of that. If there is temptation, a division of allegiance, the wise thing to do is to have nothing to do with it. Right? The question that, that we usually ask is, where is the line and how close can I get to it? Because if I'm really close to the line, but I'm not over the line, then I'm still following Jesus and I'm still aligned to Jesus, but I'm really, really, really close, right? How close can we get to the line? But I think the question that, that we, we should be asking is how far away from the line can I get? By still enjoying entertainment, by still enjoying relationships, your work, doesn't mean that you have to be a monk and go live in some community with no electricity and only read your Bible all day. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying you have to know where that line is and you have to walk away from it. We're not trying to tiptoe on the line. We are trying to say, God, my allegiance is to you. My devotion is to you, not to that. And if it's going to get into the way of that, I'm going to walk away from it. Jesus is asking for a lifestyle that doesn't question who you are devoted to. Do we have any uh, soccer fans in the room? Am I alone? Oh, Abisai, thank you. Well, uh, hopefully this analogy will work with you, right? Um, I love soccer. I, I'm a huge soccer fan. That's not good. What is that? Amber Alert. We're going to let that pass for a second. All right. So I love soccer, and I, 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 love, uh, I love the sport. I love playing it. I played it for like 13 years, um, but I also love watching it. And um, we have the privilege of having a really good American soccer team. I know it's not the same as European soccer, um, but the Sounders, they have never missed the playoffs. In their MLS existence, they have never not gone to the playoffs, and I like to brag about that. Um, they're, they're really good. They've won some MLS Cups. They've just won the Champions League. This probably means nothing to you if you don't follow soccer, but it's a really, really big deal, right? And being a Sounders fan has a couple stipulations. And I think the most important one that I really embrace fully is under no circumstances are you allowed to be a Portland Timbers fan. Being a Sounders fan means that you hate the Timbers, okay? That is part of being a, a Sounders fan. And the Sounders and Timbers rivalry is one of the greatest in American soccer. It's called the Battle of I-5. It's like 150 miles that separates them. Um, and the, the games are intense. There's usually fighting. There's usually um, a lot of yellow and red cards, right? Um, the coaches are going at it, right? And not only are the teams and the coaches going at it, but the fans are too, right? They, they have bought into this culture of I am a Sounders fan or I am a Timbers fan and I am not going to root for the Timbers. Right? There is not a doubt of who is rooting for who in these matchups. And there's a phrase that the Sounders fans say, and they say, Sounders till I die. They have a chant. They sing it really loud. They say, Sounders till I die. And I know that's intense, right? They scream it at the top of their lungs, right? A whole stadium of like 60,000 people singing that together. Like, it, it kind of gives me goosebumps. I think it's beautiful. You might not think so, right? Right, but what they are saying from that phrase is, I am all in on nothing else until the day I die. My whole life. My, my team is the sounders until the day that I die. And this should be our heart towards God. You are all in on nothing else until the day that you breathe your last breath. Jesus, till I die. I don't think we will make that a, a phrase in our church, right? Your team is Jesus, not anything else. Your team is Jesus. It says this in Matthew 22, verse 37. It says, love the Lord your God with some of your heart. No, it says all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of 
your mind. Jesus wants you to be all in. He wants your whole heart. He wants your whole soul. He wants your whole mind, every aspect of your life, not just parts of it. And this means no longer are we compartmentalizing our faith, but quite the opposite. We, um, as, as Jesus followers and, and our devotion to Jesus, are integrating our faith into every part of our life, not just moments or sections. When we go to the grocery store, Jesus is, is the team we root for. When we go to work, Jesus is the team we root for. When we go home to maybe people who don't root for Team Jesus, we are still rooting for Team Jesus, even though there is an opposition. We get to integrate, we get to devote ourselves to Jesus, every part, our heart, our soul, and our mind. And to end uh, our time this morning, I'm going to have the band come up, and I, I want us to play one last song, and, and normally when I, when I need to talk to God, when, I, when, I, when I'm struggling, when I need help, I usually get out my guitar and I sing. I sing just what I'm feeling, or I, I sing a song um, that that is capturing the heart of what I want Jesus to know. And, and this morning, um, I can um, move out of the way here. Um, Jesus, um, Jesus is asking to have it all. And there's a song that, that means a lot to me um, called Have It All. And that's what I want to sing this morning. Um, but before we do that, I, I want to inspire you for this time. Before you get ahead into your world, right after this, right, we, we get to... Uh, make a choice of who am I devoted to, right? And that's, that, it, it's, it's sticky, it's hard, right? There is competition. And can we just collectively as a church say, God, I need you, I'm devoted to you. I need your help doing that. It's okay to ask God for help, right? If you're having a hard time where you're, man, I really love this thing and I love God and they are just not working together, Ask God to help you with that devotion. Ask God to intervene, to give you the strength to be able to say, God, you can have it all. So during this time, can you, can you please just go all in for Jesus right now? If you need to pray, go ahead, pray. If you need to sit down and just think, go ahead and do that. If you need to stand and sing at the top of your lungs saying, God, you can have it all, please do that. If you need to kneel down, please do that. I didn't mention it to them, but if the prayer team could come up to the front during this song, um, and if you need to pray with somebody, we are a community of Jesus followers that get to do this together. There are people that are willing to pray for you and intercede on, be, on your behalf. So church, as we, we sing this song, can you just, just sing it with some, some oomph? Right. God, you can have it all, every part of my world. can have it all, Lord, every part of my world, take this life and breathe on, this heart that is now yours. can have it all, Lord, every part of my world, take this life and leave this heart that is now yours. Every part of my world Take this life and breathe on This heart that is now yours No 
greater call than giving you my all. I lay it all down. I lay it all down. There is no greater love, no higher name above. I lay it all down. I lay it all down. There is no greater call than giving you my all. I lay And just to, to pick up from what Tyler was saying, you know, if, if you're in this place and you know there's that gray area or maybe even that less than gray area that you're hanging on to and it's keeping you from going all in for Jesus, or maybe your Christian name only, but you know that he is not actually the Lord of your life, that he's not calling the shots, that he's just something you've added on to the side. I just want to say going all in with Jesus, it's joy. It's not the easy way, but it's the good way. It's the way that's full of life. You give up nothing that you, in the end, regret giving up. That that is the life, the, the fullest life that you can hope for. Everything that's good and pleasing and joyful comes from him. And so I just want to give that thought to you. And again, uh, the prayer team's up here. If you're, there's that thing that you know it's time to get rid of, but it's hard, well, that's what prayer is for. That's what the body of Christ is for. And also, if you are making that step of becoming a believer, of going genuinely all in with Jesus, we do have like a resource for, uh, for new believers that kind of gets you on that path. So family, it's been so good to worship with you this morning. I just want to encourage you to go out, keeping Jesus at the center, to walk out the store, go through the week, and to remember that we are just an ordinary group of people following an extraordinary God together. Go and be blessed in this week. <laughs>